I am not a historian, but neither are you. So, how about we the people learn this stuff together? Welcome to US 101. And yes, guys, this is our first ever Halloween episode, but I promise you there will be absolutely no scare jump cuts. None whatsoever. I'm not planning on any of them happening anytime soon. Seen your face. <laughs> Halloween is here, guys, and the holiday has quite a bit of imagery attached to it. You've got uh, jack o' lanterns, uh, witches, goblins, ghosts, uh, Stranger Things 2, Frankenstein's monster, zombies, and of course, vampires. And I think it's safe to say that vampires might be the most popular among the classic scary figures. I mean, think about it. It's a monster that uh, that seduces you and lures you into letting it suck the very blood out of your neck with its fangs as it pierces your skin and draws the very life force from your body. No! 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 That is not a vampire. That is not a vampire. That is a model with vitamin D deficiency. That is all that, nothing about that is scary. And we all know where the idea of the vampire came from, right guys? It's the story of Dracula, which comes from the real life person of Vlad Dracul, AKA Vlad the Impaler of Romania. And this guy was known as Vlad the Impaler because his MO was uh, to brutally murder people by impaling them on incredibly sharp spikes. And apparently he used to do that while he was having dinner. He would watch the impalings happen and have himself a meal at the same time. And when I was growing up, Dracula and pretty much most vampires, they all sounded like these. I want to suck your neck for the blood. The reason it sounds like that is because the accent comes from Eastern Europe. But what if I told you that not all vampires come from Transylvania or Romania or other parts of Eastern Europe? What if I told you that some vampires we're right here in the United States of America. For our first ever Halloween episode, guys, I cannot wait to jump into this, man. I want to tell you guys the story of the person that's become known as the last American vampire. So turn your lights down low, curl up under the covers, and listen as I tell you the tale of Mercy Lena Brown, the last American vampire. In 1892, George Brown's wife, Mary, and his daughters, Mary and Mercy, were dead. They were taken from him by a disease that was known back then as the consumption. And throughout New England in the 1800s, many were taken away by the consumption. It was a terrible disease, and those that suffered from it went through extreme bouts of agony before dying. The body would waste away. There was a high fever and a hacking cough that was so violent that the victim would regularly spit up blood. It was often said that the victims of the consumption looked as if their very life force was being drained from their bodies. And like many other families in New England, the Brown family could not escape this horrendous disease. And following the deaths of George Brown's wife and daughters, his own son Edwin began showing symptoms of the consumption and his body began to fail him. The townspeople of Exeter came to George Brown with a dark suggestion. They proposed to the humble farmer that his son was not suffering from some sort of illness, but that an unseen evil presence was willing him to the grave. In fact, According to the Providence Journal, a newspaper of note, it suggested that one of the three brown women that had passed away were responsible for Edwin's current situation. So the townspeople came to Farmer George Brown and told him that they would like to exhume the bodies of his beloved Mary, Mary, and Mercy, whom the family affectionately called Lena, to see if any of their bodies contained any fresh blood. So on March 17, 1892, a group of men dug up the bodies. And when they dug up the bodies of the two Marys and opened the coffins, all they found were skeletons. But when the grave diggers brought up the third coffin of Mercy, Lena Brown, to their horror, they found that her body was still well preserved. And for that matter, 
they found decomposed and clotted blood inside of her heart. Filled with terror, the gravediggers knew what they had to do. They cut out Mercy Lena Brown's heart and liver, took them to a nearby rock, and burned them until they were reduced to ash. And then those ashes were taken to her brother, Edwin, and fed to him. Surely, the townspeople thought, consuming the organs of the undead creature that was attempting to kill you would most certainly stop this curse and stop the spread of this consumption. But it was not meant to be. Two months after Edwin consumed his sister's heart and liver, he died. And as for Mercy Lena Brown, her legend grew beyond New England, beyond the United States, as she became known as the undead vampire whose heart was eaten by her brother. Now then! Let's shed a little bit of light on the story, shall we? Okay, so first off, the disease known as the consumption that I was talking about in that story uh, goes by a much more familiar name today. You guys all know the name, I think. Um, the consumption is tuberculosis, or TB for short. Hopefully you guys are all familiar with tuberculosis because when you're young, usually what happens is you go to a doctor and you get a TB shot so that you don't get the disease because this is not a disease that you want. First of all, it's incredibly contagious, okay? It's an airborne disease. It's spread by people sneezing or coughing. And if you get tuberculosis and you're not vaccinated for it, uh, it's a disease that severely infects your lungs. Now, it's said that TB began taking lives around the New England area starting around 1730. And even though the bacteria that causes tuberculosis uh, was discovered in 1882, it's not like that news got around really fast in the rural areas of the United States. You have to remember that there's no internet back then. There's no real way of spreading this kind of information to rural folks. So when they see tuberculosis, or in their case, the consumption, they're, they're trying to figure out how to fix it on their own. Next, let's take a look at the Brown family. Now, once again, the story that I told you, as creepy as it can be, uh, is actually 100% true. The three women in George Brown's life, uh, his wife Mary, his daughter Mary, and his daughter Mercy, were all killed because of tuberculosis. Additionally, when the symptoms of TB hit his son Edwin even harder, that was after an 18-month trip that Edwin had taken out in Colorado Springs to see if the weather out there, if the water and the minerals out there would, would help him with his ailment. So Edwin Brown had been dealing with TB for quite some time, man, but unfortunately because they didn't know what the cure for tuberculosis was back then, dude was pretty much destined to be taken out by this thing. Now as to the exhumed graves that the gravediggers brought up in 1892, uh, the reason that the coffins of the two Marys contained nothing but bones was because they both died in 18. 82, 10 years prior to Mercy Lena Brown's death. And then furthermore, when Mercy's grave was dug up, the reason that the body was so well preserved was because she'd only been dead for a few months and she died in the winter time. It's cold in New England in the winter time, which preserved the body because it was kind of frozen. That's why the body hadn't decayed as much as the other two, which is why a lot of people thought that Mercy uh, was rising from the grave and sucking the life and the blood out of her brother. And finally, Mercy Lena Brown is known as the last American vampire because following the, uh, the media circus that surrounded her exhumation, um, a lot of stories of vampirism in the United States pretty much stopped. But by calling her the last American vampire, that must mean that there were other cases of vampirism in the United States before her, right? Indeed there were. As a matter of fact, if you guys want to click that link down below in the description box, you can read about other cases of vampirism that were found in the New England area. These people uh, became known as the, uh, as the New England Vampires. Why the football team passed on that name is beyond... That's like the New England Vampires? Who would want to play against that team? And that... My fellow Halloweenies, is it for this episode of US 101. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and for uh, for listening to the story. Hopefully you appreciate it. Hopefully you got a little bit of a chill running down your spine as I was trying to convey to you in my spooky, deep voice did it do the job. And as always, guys, thank you so much for subscribing to US 101 and for liking the videos, for watching them, for sharing them, and uh, for leaving comments in the comment section. Let me know, guys, in the comment section down below for Halloween. You dressing up? What's your costume? Are you dressing up as a, as a figure of American history? Let me know. I'd love to know what uh, you're going to be hitting the streets as this year. As always, guys, you can follow US 101 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All the links down below in the description box. Guys, I will see you next Tuesday for an all-new episode of US 101. Until then, I am all 
done. And by the way, if you're in Chicago and you're trick-or-treating and you walk past my apartment in the hope that you can get candy, keep on going. Keeping all the full-size candy bars for myself this year. Reese's Big Cups and you can't have none of my candy. I work for my candy. I work for my candy.